What is up, Cultivate students? We hope you guys are having a wonderful Thanksgiving break. Uh, we miss seeing you guys tonight at midweek, uh, but we know you guys are getting ready for tomorrow and getting ready to eat some of that good Thanksgiving meal. Uh, we know some of you guys are going to just go crazy tomorrow. I know I am. Uh, I'm getting ready to just devour everything that's going to be happening in our house. So I love Thanksgiving. I told you guys uh, this past month it is one of my top three holidays, um, strictly because of food. Uh, food and football. Uh, is the best part. But uh, Pastor Adam and Avery here uh, for tonight, since we're not having our midweek, what we want to do tonight is just spend some time with you. Um, we have a, a message that we felt like God put on our hearts that we just want to share with you guys uh, tonight. And so we're excited about some things that we're going to be looking at uh, and just diving into just tonight so you guys can see um, kind of where we feel like God was leading us. So one of the things we do, if you have your Bibles, hopefully you do, uh, for those of you, real Bibles, remember, not a glowing Bible, real Bible. Uh, I want to share with you guys uh, the message verse from tonight is from 1 Timothy chapter 6, is verse 17. It says, Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant nor to put their hope in wealth, which is un so uncertain, but to put their hope in God who richly provides with us everything for our enjoyment. Um, and what Avery and I kind of felt like we want to talk about tonight is, have you ever felt that you've been in a situation that no matter what you do, it just doesn't get better? No matter how hard you try, no matter what you do, it feels like you are just digging a hole over and over and over again. Uh, I know for me, uh, many of you guys have witnessed this, whether it's here on a Wednesday or Sunday, or just know me in general, whether I've, I've, I've done this with one of you possibly, but with my wife, I have the worst time digging a hole, and Avery's laughing because... She's always kind of been my, uh, my, hey, you need to chill out, bro. Like, you're, you're, like now's the time to shut it down. Um, but I've always been bad about digging a hole with Emily. I'll say something and not realize that I think it's funny, but apparently nobody else thinks it's funny. And it does nothing but continually just dig a hole over and over again to the point where they're like, hey, um, you know you're not going to get out of this hole. Like, you're done. Like, you've dug a hole terribly. And I'll say things that I shouldn't have, and I won't think about things. But no matter how hard I try to get back out after I've dug the hole, I continue to just keep digging and digging and digging um, and just making it worse for me and get myself in trouble with my wife. You guys are supposed to be do a better job of that and keep me out of that trouble. Um, but I think a lot of times they sit and watch and enjoy uh, what comes from it because I end up setting myself up. Well, we let it get to a certain point and then we start cacawing. But if you don't listen, there's not much we can do after that. Yeah. They try to give me the, the heads up. But, um, but what we're looking at, the point of that is that it, it looks different in our lives. We have moments um, where life just gets tough and life just gets hard no matter what we do. Um, and it may not always be something that we're doing, um, which uh, I think a lot of time it is. It's something that we, maybe it's self-inflicted, whether it's choices we made, uh, words we've said, way we've treated people, uh, choices that, that we've made that have got us into these situations. But a lot of times these, these things that we see in our life, it, it just doesn't get better. And it feels like, okay, I'm going further and further and further down. Uh, it's not getting any better. I feel like I'm just digging a hole. And you, you just end up crying out to God, why am I here? Why am I continually going down to this? And what this is something that we call is called seasons in our lives. And the reason that we call it seasons is because it passes. Seasons come and go. Um, it's not something that lasts. Winter's not always going to be here. Summer's not always here. Fall, spring, those are things that pass. And we, we hope they are. And we want to look at them that way. Uh, but these things are, are times in our life that are going to come and go. Um, we're hoping typically sooner rather than later. Um, but these seasons that, that we see in our lives, we need to understand that sometimes they can last. Uh, it can last days. Uh, it can last weeks, months. It can last uh, years. And I can personally tell you, I hate seasons. Like I hate it. I hate it. And you, you're in this moment and you say, we're just, we're going through a season in our life. And what's even worse is when you're going through it and other people recognize it and they tell you like, hey, you're just going through a season in your life. You, you literally want to do nothing but like punch that person. Like, I know, I get it. I'm going through a season in my life. You understand 100% what I'm saying, don't you? Yes. 
So, it, it, and you're like, I, I get it. But I think it's important that we see this. And I think it's important that we recognize these seasons. And, and, and while it may sound weird to say, seasons are good for us. Um, it, it, look at it this way. Think about an animal that sheds its skin. Uh, it's because it's growing. It's because it's getting, uh, it's getting better. It's getting mature. And it's shedding its old self. And a lot of times when we go through seasons, this is our way to shed our skin. This is our way to say, okay, it's time that I build some thicker skin. Um, it's time that I learn something from this. And a lot of times the seasons that we're going through in our lives, God is trying to teach us something. And I, I feel like sometimes seasons occur because we don't listen to God when we should listen to God. And he says, you know what? If you're not going to listen to me, I'm going to take it to the extreme and I'm going to put you through this. And I'm going to put you through just to make sure uh, that, that this does. I mean, how kind of you in that same boat, Avery, you get what I'm saying in terms of seasons and, yeah. and where we are? Because I think at the end of it, when you come out of it, you're better. And, but it's those moments that you have to understand and see it and understand what's happening because it's so important to recognize those seasons. And it's important to recognize it because in that moment, God may be trying to show you something. God may be trying to teach you something. God may be trying to, to point you in a completely different direction than what you understand. But God's trying to use these, these moments. That it, it, they cause us pain. Um, sometimes it, it's miserable. We hate being in it. We hate being stuck in it. But these moments that we're dealing with, God is it, teaching us. And God's doing so much for us and trying to make us better than, than who we are. So that's something that, that we want to look at tonight. Uh, and, and we want to look over these things. So why should we welcome seasons? Why are seasons uh, important in our lives? And what Avery and I came up with are just a couple points that maybe right now you, you could be sitting there watching this right now and thinking like, this is me. I'm, I'm walking, whatever your situation is, whatever, it, whether it's a relationship that you feel like it's either going right or left, whether it's a relationship with your, your parents, or whether it, that could be lack thereof, whether it's a decision in where to go to school, maybe it's decisions that you make in school, uh, maybe uh, it, it's job related things, whatever it is that you're going through right now, maybe it's uh, developing who you are, maybe it's something that you're struggling with, maybe it's an addiction, maybe it's uh, something you know you shouldn't be involved in, but it's a season in your life that you're dealing with. Why do you want to be good enough to recognize it? Why should you see it right away? So these are some of the things that we just want to take tonight and, and just look at. We have three things that we felt like come from a season, if you understand it and recognize it, that God is trying to do in your lives through a season. So yeah, our first point is, just like Adam was saying, God is trying to teach us. Um, so in these seasons of life, God is um, taking us through. It is so easy to just lose sight of mm. where he's trying to take us on this path of life. It's so easy to lose why we're trying, like why we're doing what we're doing, why we're on the path God has us on. Um, and that's why it's so crucial to realize that it is a season. Because if you don't realize it's a season, you're just like, why is God doing this to me? Why yeah. is my life so awful right now? Why is it just one shoe dropping after another? But then you have to realize that in this season, there's a lesson to be learned because God is trying to teach you something. Um, maybe your friend is struggling with something that you used to struggle with. Maybe you're dealing with your parents going through a divorce or you're struggling through an addiction or something that you just don't know how to keep your head above water. Um, in Luke chapter 12, verses 11 and 12, it says, don't worry about how to defend yourself or what to say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what needs to be said. Simply have faith. Just mm -hmm. have faith that God knows what he's doing. He knows where he's taking you on this path. He knows that farther down the road, it's not going to be just like this. Farther down the road, your path is much different than you can see it right now because he can see way farther than we can. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's hard to see because... I mean, we're human, we make mistakes, but we can only see so far ahead. He can see our entire lives. He knows yeah. exactly what seasons we're gonna go through and at what times that we're just gonna feel like we're at complete rock bottom. Yeah. And that's where you have to realize that there's a lesson to be learned because I can guarantee you when you get out of this season, you're gonna need what you learned in this season to get through the next season. Yeah, yeah. That, that's it's so true. It's and it's so important that you recognize that and see that because 
you know, you may be dealing with something right now and, and saying like, why is this, why is life just so tough? Why is this ridiculous? Why do I, why is life just not going the way I want to? And it, it's almost like a light bulb. It's got to click on and be like, God is trying to teach me this. Like I know, and, and maybe it's a way that you react to something. I know I've, I've gone through something recently where I just, I have a hard time how I react to things and becoming angry. And I just know God's like, bro, I'm trying to show you, like I'm trying to teach you patience and I'm trying to teach you just how to respond to people and how to love on people. And he puts you in that situation and, and the crazy part about it, until you learn it, he's going to keep teaching you and you're going to be stuck in that season. Uh, so I think that's a great point is that our seasons are, and I almost want to say out of all the points, I feel like that's our, our most important one is that your seasons are a teachable moment. Like it's something that God is trying to use to teach you. And the second thing that we, that we looked at and thought about that when we go through these seasons, God is trying to stretch us. Um, God's trying to stretch us. If you think about this, every athlete, uh, before they do any type of activity, they, it's always important. The coaches say, you got to stretch. Uh, you got to stretch out. The only way that you can get better, the only way that you don't mess up or, or get cramps during the activity, you've got to stretch. So you've got to stretch out. You've you got to be ready uh, for what comes. And I think it's important that when we go through these seasons in our life, that's what God is trying to do. God is essentially stretching us past what we feel like we can do. Like, I, I know I'm probably the world's worst at touching my toes. I'm a chubby guy, okay? I can't tell you the last time I legitimately touched my toes without bending my knees, but I know if I'm going to get better at it, I have to keep practicing because I keep stretching and stretching until uh, I get to that point. And, and one of the things I want to I show you guys is in Hebrews chapter 11. This is a great uh, verse because Paul, uh, Paul in this verse, he lays out a, a list of things that, that it takes, uh, like Bible personalities that it takes to have faith. Uh, and powerful ways that, that we can have that faith and things that can come in our lives. And this verse, and, and I wrote it down, it's known as the faith, uh, like the hall of fame for faith, because this really puts an example of how we should live by this faith. And it says this, it's, it's Hebrews chapter 11, but verse six is the one I want to point out. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So, when we're stretched out, that's the way that God is putting pressure on our faith. Like our faith only gets better, uh, just like an athlete, they only get better when they stretch. And God's trying to stretch uh, our faith. And that's really what um, we look at when it comes to this with our relationship with God is that we have to stretch out our, our faith in him. We have to put our trust in him. We have to learn where we can get better in our own walk uh, with Christ so we can see this. And we also see this laid out in, in Romans chapter 10. It's verses 9 through 10. It says, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For the one with the heart believes and is justified, and with the, the mouth one confesses and is saved. So when you read, when you read chapter, chapter 11 in Hebrews, it's showing you that that faith is impossible um, without God. Like you've got to have that faith in it, and it's impossible to, to please God. We're not trying, God doesn't want us to be a bunch of people pleasers. It's not how God wants to live our life. But what he wants to do is God wants to, to make us better. God wants to stretch us through these seasons in our life. God's going to stretch your faith. Um, and, and who knows what that means for you? When you look at these places that they are, and I think about this, I think about like MMA fighters. Like it's a crazy to watch. And if you sit and watch a fight, to watch these guys, and it's funny because there's guys that are 10 times as big as me that have bigger bellies than I do that are swinging their legs and like they're kicking them as high. Like I can't kick that high. Like I would show you guys right now, but I'd be embarrassed because it's on caught on camera. But I can't kick that high. I look ridiculous. And I think about these guys. Like how did the, how in the world could a guy that size swing his leg that high and make it look that pretty and look that good? Because he spent time stretching. Because he spent time working on things. And and what I look at is that those moments for that, that fighter, he's pushing his body beyond the limits. And I think with our faith, when we go through seasons, God is going to push your faith beyond the limits. God's going to put you in situations that make you feel uncomfortable. God's going to put you in situations that honestly probably make you want to cry and want to shake and just want to make you tear your hair out and make you upset. But it's not because God is a vengeful God. It's not because God is, is someone who's, who's mean. God is saying like, look, you only get better when you go through tough situations, you only get better and stretch out. When I put you in a situation like this, that, that kind of stretches your faith. And I looked at it, it for you that I wrote down, I said, okay, where are you guys at? For each of you guys that are sitting and watching this right now, where are some ways that God is trying to stretch your faith? Where are some ways in your life that's going on right now 
As you sit there and you hear this, and maybe it's, it's, it's rolling in your mind, what are some things that God is trying to do? God may be trying to make you simply just do something. God may be stretching you to the point to just make you do something. Or the flip side of that, God may be trying to make you stop doing something. Like maybe you're doing something that you started that you shouldn't be doing. God may be trying to get you to give something. Whether it's uh, maybe it's how you serve or how you uh, treat others. Maybe God's trying to get you to give something of yourself uh, to someone else or, or how to say something. Maybe it's somebody that God's trying to teach you to look, speak up. Like, I want to use you. I want you to stand in this role. I want you to do these things. Maybe God is trying to get you to stop saying something. I think there's always a flip side. To do something, stop doing something. To, uh, to give something, to not give something. To say something, to not say something. Maybe God is trying to teach you, just shut your mouth. Like, don't, don't be negative. Don't be mean. Like, don't, don't talk that way to people. God may be just trying you to do that. God may be trying you to tell you that you need to end something, right? Like, it's same thing. Like, maybe he's trying to tell you to start something. God may be like, hey, that needs, whether that's a relationship that you know right now is not good for you, uh, whether it's friendships that you know are not feeding into you and making you better, God may be saying, like, look, you got to stop something. And then on the flip side of that, he may be like, hey, you need to start something with these people or over here or be into this small group or be with this group of people. God may be trying to, or God may also be trying just to teach you to love someone, whether it's family members or maybe it's someone that you, you, you need to be closer to. God's trying to teach you to do all of these things. And the chances are you may be sitting there right now and not realize it, but God's trying to stretch you today and, and just know that it's the only way our faith is going to grow when God takes a moment and just stretches us out. So... And that leads us right into our third point, is that God is trying to grow us. Um, in Romans chapter 8, verses 29 and 30, it says, For God knew his people in advance, and he chose them to become like his son, so that his son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And having chosen them, he called them to come to him. And having called them, he gave them right standing with himself. And having, giving, having given them right standing, he gave them his glory. Yeah. So... He chose them to become like his son, plain and simple. We were created with room to grow because we were created in his image. Yeah. In his image, not copy and paste. We were created like him, which means we have room to grow every single day. We have a goal at the end to become as much like Jesus as possible because that's how we were created. We were created to be like him, which means... We all have growing room. We all have things that we need to learn through these seasons of life. Mm -hmm. um, which means that in these tough seasons, we have to trust God because he's the only one that knows where our path is supposed to end. So we have to trust him. Mm -hmm. But how can we trust him if we don't have a relationship with him? Yeah. And how do you have a relationship if you don't talk to somebody? Yeah. So maybe that's where you just need to start. Start by praying. And then maybe after you have prayed for a certain amount of time, maybe you'll feel like you have a relationship with God. And then after you have that relationship for a certain amount of time, you'll start to trust God. And that trust leads to that deep faith that when something is going completely opposite of what you thought it was, it's going to be okay because God is there. God is in control. He knows what he's doing, no matter what your situation is. Yeah. So at the end of it all, have faith because he has an incredible plan for your life, whether you can see it or not. Yeah. So in those tough seasons, just find the lesson he's teaching you. Find where he's stretching your faith and find where you need to grow. Yeah. And, and really focus on, on those things. And we, we understand that you guys uh, are walking through something right now. We understand that um, sometimes it feels like it's not going to get any better. Sometimes we, we understand that it feels like it's just this endless cycle you, you get caught up and you say, okay, what, what next, God? Like you, you get so used to it that when one thing happens, it doesn't even phase you because you're just waiting on the next thing. But maybe the reason that you keep having things happen time after time after time is because you haven't learned anything the first time. Maybe you didn't let God stretch you the first time. Maybe you haven't allowed God to grow who you are the first time. Or this could be your third, fourth, fifth time walking through something like this. So it's just something we felt like as we get into this time of the year, uh, you get into the holidays, you get into the end of the year, a lot of times people like to look and think, okay, what did I do in 2017? Where did I get better at? What did I get worse at? And, you know, as we, we sat and thought about this, we felt like this is something that was important to look at because 
we all understand as a year, as you finish the year, myself included, I look back and I think, okay, this is what happened in 2017. This is what I dealt with. This is what I went through. It lasted X amount of time because either I didn't let this happen or I didn't learn this or I didn't do this or I didn't listen to God or spend time with God. And instead, I feel like sometimes we get so wound up and we get so angry with God because what we're dealing with, we don't take time to look and understand that God is trying to teach us something. Because just remember, just like we said earlier, at the end of the day, when everything's all said and done, seasons are the only way that we're going to grow. Seasons are the only way that we're going to be stretched, and seasons are the only way that we're going to learn. Uh, because if life is great and it just keeps flowing and flowing, you're not going to grow and you're not going to get any better and you're not going to let your, your faith be tested. So just as you deal with that, as you go through uh, whatever the stress is in your life, just, just take a moment to look. Take a moment to reflect. Take a moment, and as crazy as it sounds, welcome it. Welcome it and say, all right, God, I know I'm dealing with this. I hate every single moment of it, but what is it that you're trying to do? What are you trying to do through this time? So look, let's take a moment. Let's just bow our heads and just pray, uh, and then we'll wish you guys a, a happy Thanksgiving. So dear Heavenly Father, God, we just, uh, God, we thank you for the message that you brought today, God. We just thank you for uh, seasons in our life. As much as we hate them, as much as we, uh, we, we complain and kick and cry when we go through these things, we know that, God, um, you're putting us through these for a reason because, God, this is the only way that our faith is ever tested. This is the only way that our faith is ever uh, made new. And sometimes we just have to shed away uh, our old faith, God, because sometimes we have to make way for it to be stronger and better. And God, whatever it is that you have a student going through, whether wh whoever's sitting here listening to this message right now, God, I just pray uh, that whatever they're going through, God, I, I hope that they do open their heart and their ears and their mind that you're able to teach them. Uh, and then when you do, God, I hope that they're able to allow you to, to stretch who they are. And God, I hope from all this, from the teaching, the stretching, God, that, that they grow and they become better. And God, we, just, uh, we know that you have some amazing plans for us, whether we understand it, whether we can see it or not. And God, we thank you for that, God. We just thank you for uh, your endless love, God. You, you loved us more than you should. You gave more than you ever should for us, but you sh uh, your son shed his own blood for us, God. And we just thank you for, uh, for that. We're thankful for that, God. We, just, we thank you for everything that you're doing in our lives and everything that you have planned uh, coming up. In your name we pray, amen. Hey, thank you guys for watching. Again, we miss being with you tonight, uh, but we hope you guys are enjoying some time with the family. Get excited. Make sure you guys are back next week as we get ready for our takeover night. So we'll see you guys next Wednesday.